So here we are on the outline analysis without covariates still, and now we're going to turn to RILTA, Random Intercept Latent Transition Analysis. And here you have the model figure. We have the usual uh, latent transition analysis model here at the bottom, but now we're adding a factor, a continuous latent variable. And we're going to think of that as a random intercept. It's going to have mean zero, variance one, and it's going to have different loadings for each of the latent class indicators per time point. But those loadings, factor loadings, are going to be the same across time point. So that's the specific feature here. So this is described in detail in this article that's forthcoming in Psychological Methods in 2021. It's also described in M plus Web Talk number one. The modeling ideas are contrasted with the regular LTA modeling ideas. So this factor, F, it captures time invariant between subject differences time invariant between subject differences. So that's often referred to as trait differences in psychology. And in psychometrics, you might want to refer to it as measurement non-invariance. That's constant over time. Measurement non-invariance referring to the fact that the probability of an outcome of a latent class indicator giving latent class is different for different individuals with different F values, which also influences the latent class indicator outcomes. So given that, so because you have differences across individuals in the conditional latent class indicator probabilities, you have measurement non-invariance, and it's a constant one across time. On slide 32, we say a few more words about what this means and what the consequences are of using RILTA. So it turns out that in all the examples that I've seen so far, it fits the data much better than regular LTA, which seems, in retrospect, unnecessarily restrictive and gives distorted results. So the idea here is that you have longitudinal data, which is really a two-level model of time within persons. And in any two-level model, you would at least have a random intercept somewhere, if not also a random slope. So that's the idea here. We are adding, finally, a random intercept to this latent transition analysis model. And thereby, we don't have this confounding of between and within subject sources of variation. So these transitions represent a within subject process where we have taken out, gotten rid of, time invariant between subject differences, which are up here, influencing the outcomes, but not influencing the latent classes. And by this, the latent class indicators correlate over time beyond what's captured by the latent class correlations over time. In regular LTA, you have correlation between U11 and U21, for instance, only because C1 influences C2. So you have this indirect connection between them. But in the random intercept version, uh, the U1, U11 and U21 indicators correlate also because they have the common cause, the factor F. So because of that, it tends to produce, or to reduce rather, the probability of subjects staying in the same class over time as compared to regular LTA where you can think of the staying, part of the staying in the same class tendency is due to individuals' uh, trait values influencing the outcomes at the same, at the, at the different time point, the same way. It reduces the need for mover-stay modeling because of that, since movers and stayers can be captured by different random intercept values. So instead of having the dichotomy of movers and stayers, you have a continuous difference between those who tend to move more versus they tend to stay more by the F values differing. 
across individuals. In M plus terms, you have a model command for the random intercept factor F, which looks like this. F measured by, in this case, two indicators. And we free the loadings of those indicators so that we set the metric instead by fixing the factor variance to 1 and the factor mean to 0. That turns out to be the preferred metric setting. And those two loadings will be labeled P1 and P2. That's at lambda 1 and lambda 2. And we want to hold them equal across time. So we have the same labels for the second time point and for the third time point. And the semicolon doesn't come until down here. Now RILTA typically needs more random starts than regular LTA. ML estimation, which we use here, requires numerical integration over this factor F. The numerical integration can in principle be time consuming, but in this case we have only one dimension of, dimension of integration, namely one factor. So this is the combination you know, of a continuous latent variable and categorical observed variables like you have in item response theory where you also have to use numerical integration. So in the analysis command we add algorithm equals integration and the default number of integration points is 15 as usual but in some cases you need more points, perhaps 30, to increase the numerical precision and thereby be able to replicate the best log likelihood. So you may add integration equals 30. Now on slide 34, I point out that there have been software improvements over the recent versions for both LTA, regular LTA, and RILTA. RILTA can be time consuming, as I mentioned, due to numerical integration and needing many random starts to find the global maximum. So we made an improvement in version 8.4, which was released November 2019, getting significant speed improvements using a new three-stage random start search and using some specialized computational algorithms. And this is described in the technical report here, random starting values and multi-stage optimization. And you can click on this and you get to the report. And the quote here is 20 hours computation in M plus 8.3 can be done in M.4, 8.4 in less than 15 minutes, by utilizing these advantages, as well as updated hardware using the i9 Intel CPU instead of the i7. In addition, we've made substantially simplified output for these mixture models with multiple latent class variables, both in version 8.4 and in version 8.5 and now further in version 8.6, which has been uh, substantially improved in terms of output clarity and interpretational ease. Uh, just looking at two examples then regarding speed, here's an example for uh, continuous RILTA model, so a random intercept factor, three latent classes, five categories each, 12 observed categorical variables, one dimension of numerical integration, 3,000 people, moderate to large starts set. That's example four uh, on my computer, which was and is actually an i7 with pro pro processor equal to eight, took 14 and a half minutes. <coughs> on a, a colleague in the M plus group computer, um, it took eight minutes, same number of processors, but with the i9 Intel CPU and then you increasing the number of processors with, which are available for that configuration, you cut it down to uh, seven minutes. So a factor of two from 14 minutes down to a little over seven minutes. An example five, uh, there we see the uh, example where it took almost half an hour before, and now you can get away with uh, doing it in uh, less than 15 minutes. But that's a heavy example. Now regarding the numerical imprecision and the negative, we have these, this concept of negative apps changes in the log likelihood. You know, you want over the iterations that the log likelihood should improve. So not have negative apps changes 
which are in this second column and this is your screen printout. So the second column you see that you have some negative values here coming up in several places and that can make the computations uh, more difficult, take a longer time and can make it harder to replicate the best log likelihood. And it usually points to the need for using more integration points to get a log likelihood computation that is uh, such that it always improves the log likelihood. So no negative apps changes. Absolute value changes is what it refers to. Now, better numerical precision avoids these, but leads to slower calculations. So that's once again going from 15 to 30 integration points, which usually clears this up. But note that negative apps changes may appear only for the poor solutions, those with uh, uh, worse log likelihood values than the optimal solutions. So that's of less concern. But you don't want to have these negative apps changes present for the best log likelihood solution. You can also try to avoid these negative apps changes by switching off the adaptive uh, integration setting that's default which then forces monotonic log likelihood improvement. So it forces you to not have negative apps changes, but you do lose some precision in the computations. Now, another practical matter is uh, what kind of sample size and what kind of number of time points do you need for these analysis with RILTA? Well, in general, with categorical latent class indicators, uh, large samples are recommended also for regular LTA and certainly for RILTA. N should be in the order of a couple of thousands, preferably. Reading data has 3,500 observations. Now with binary indicators, regular LTA, when it is the correct model, may be all right, already at 500 observations, but your power will be low for finding effects on transitions. So if you have covariance and try to find effect of covariance on the transitions, you may not have power to enough power to reject that the uh, covariate influence is zero. RILTA performs well when you have at least three time points, as, as long as you have at least 500 observations. Now with binary indicators and two time points only, you may need uh, at least 4,000 observations, as indicated by a simulation that I did in the um, RILTA paper. With binary indicators and 500 observations and two time points, and if the RILTA is the true model, even though that's not the optimal setting for RILTA, that is too few observations, too few time points, RILTA does have less bias than regular LTA. So if the data were truly generated by an RILTA model, there's no comfort in using regular LTA, which in principle could be good at low sample size and only two time points. Our LTA has less bias and is preferred. Now with continuous indicators, the situation is quite different. Then uh, with 500 observations and two, only two time points, our LTA gets good results. So there you have a first quick overview of uh, advantages and um, practical considerations for using RILTA. So next we'll go to uh, some outputs and take a look at RILTA in practice on the reading data.